Here's the situation. You have charted monthly sales data that will become unchartable over time. What you need is a way to chart the monthly sales with a scrolling marquee function. Let's take a look at this example. Here I have charted all my sales. It's 26 months worth of data and it's already too crowded. And when my next month completes, it's just going to get more crowded. So what I want to do is be able to come up with a way where this always shows a certain number of time periods but then I can move through it as I see fit. So the first thing I'm going to do to accomplish this is anywhere in the spreadsheet I'm going to type number of time periods I always want the chart to show. Six. The next thing I'm going to type in is the scroll value. This is just an arbitrary number because it's going to change but it means within my data where do I want to start from my first point of information. Next thing to make this easier is I'm going to name some ranges. I'm going to come up to my name manager, hit new, and I'm going to name this data point right here. And anytime I name ranges, I always pick the shortest thing I can think of because I'm going to use this later in a formula and I don't want to type too much. So I said this was going to be for the size of the chart or the number of time periods. So I'm just going to type in TP for time periods. Then I'm going to refer to that cell and click OK. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the scroll value. Come down here, it's already highlighted, click OK. Now let's take a look at this data. I'm going to be scrolling through this data when I draw my chart. So to me, this just screams offset. Perfect situation for an offset formula. I'm going to need an offset formula for each axis. This is the x-axis, the horizontal. This is the y-axis, the vertical. So I'm going to come back up to my name manager and make two more named ranges. I'm going to call the first one CX, which stands for chart x-axis. Come down here and use my, and just type in rather, my offset formula. First argument in the offset formula is the base. So that's going to be my base. Next thing is how many rows do I want to move from the base? Well, that's always going to be what my scroll value is, so I'm just going to type in scroll value. Next thing is columns. I want to stay in my column, so I don't even need that, so I can just skip it and hit a comma. The next argument is the height. What's the height going to be? Well, the height is going to be the number of bars that I always want to show, and I also name that time periods, or TP, so I can just type in TP. That's the name, or that's the end of this formula click OK. Got to do the same thing for the y-axis. Now the y-axis is going to be exactly the same range only shifted over to the right one. So this offset formula is going to be pretty easy. All I have to do is say CX. How many rows do I want to move? I don't need that. Now this one's how many columns do I want to move? I need to move to the right one so I just type in one and then I don't need the rest of that. So that's all I need for the y-axis offset formula. And this is all I need to get this charting technique to work. Let's come back over to the chart. Now I'm going to insert my scroll bar. I'm using Excel 2010 and that's found on the developer tab. You may have to load the developer tab to get to be able to do this. But once it's up there, go to insert, go to form controls, find the scroll button or scroll bar come down, left click, hold, drag, and put it on your sheet. You're going to have to hit format control. You right click on it first. This comes up and you have to change some um, values here. You don't want zero here because this is going to return the very top of my range and at the very top of my range was the word month. So I don't want that to be part of it. So I'm going to put in one. One is going to bring back my very first value. Here it automatically picked 100. I could leave it like that, but then I'd have a lot of empty spaces because I only have 26 time periods. So I'm going to change this to 26. I could always come back later and change that if I needed to. The cell link is my scroll value, which I named, so I'm only going to need to type in the name, SV. So now I can check this to see if it's working, and it is. See, as I click and scroll to the right, these numbers are going up by one. That's exactly what I wanted. Now I gotta work on the chart. 
I'm going to change this, the uh, data here because it's referring to this whole thing. So I'm going to pick the sales data, which is the y-axis, hit edit, and this part is what I need to change. I'm going to put in the CY that I named, but it needs to know the name of the file to look in. So I named this file scroll chart, and it also needs the extension XLSX. And then just CY. And I have to do the same thing for the dates. Scroll chart dot XL SX CX. Click OK. So now we can already see that there's only six bars showing one, two, three, four, five, six. And as I scroll over, it's moving over. So I'm scrolling through all my data. Now when I get to a point where I don't have six bars, it's going to start to make the bars wider. You'll see that in a second. See how, what it's doing there? Now personally, I don't like that. So I'm going to show you how to change that. If you notice these dates down here, they also say 10 1, 12 1, 13, you know. That's not how I had it charted over here. It's always the end of the month, like 131, 229. That's just a formatting change. But since I'm going to do this, what I'm about to show you, I don't have to worry about it because it'll happen automatically. This is why when I run out of enough for six values, the bars get bigger. So I'm going to just change this to text. That fixed two things. I mean, it fixed the dates, but now if there's any spots, it'll just show an empty spot, and the bars remain the same size. I think that's better. Anybody who's using this, they could tell, oh, I must have gotten to the end of the data. Now for a couple of style points, I'm going to take this chart and move it over to the right because nobody needs to see this. I'm going to move this up so it's going to be behind the chart. And sometimes people don't even notice that that's there. So I'm going to grab this and put it on the chart. Make it a little smaller. So now it's on the chart. It makes it a little more obvious that this is an interactive chart. Let me show you how I did that. And that is a way to solve this need.